What the f For those of you that haven't heard of Kanagi, um... <laughs> loser. For those of you that have heard of Kanagi, or even, God forbid, watched it, or, or should I say, Goddess forbid... <laughs> <laughs> you might be a squill confused, but don't worry, don't fear. I promise that you you might understand what I'm talking about by the end of this. I mean, if you um if you if you uh, watch to the end of the video at least like okay, come on guys what, what the what the fuck is this? Kanagi Crazy Shrine Maidens is an anime that visually looks like it was the abandoned child of Kayon, Anohana, Anonatsu de Matsuru, Tamako Market, Coco Connect, and Beyond the Boundary. If it was aborted three weeks before birth, and don't get me wrong, it it looks pretty good, but um sometimes. Sometimes... Um, but yeah, recently I've seen a lot of people talking about Squid Game and how, oh, <laughs> this anime is just like Squid Game Squiddy on my squid, but to be squid right now, they're just cashing in on the views, dude. Like, none of these people are brave enough to speak out on the real Squid Game here. Like, I I'm just gonna be on completely honest for a second. They're just inking a dead squid at this point. Like, I, I don't understand why the only thing that equals Squid Game to these people is the fact that it's a fucking death game. Like, there is far more to Squid Game than fucking Minecraft Hunger Games, dude. I'm tired of this shit. What's so scary about Kanagi to me is that if you read in between the lines, you will realize very quickly what's actually going on here. Indeed, it started with me just watching the show, you know, cra crazy shrine maidens, uh, they're, they're fucking- uh, that's funny, dude, they're crazy, like, I get- that's the fucking point of the show. And I think it was around the beginning of episode 3 where I noticed something, um, it, it's like the stars actually aligned for once in my life, please subscribe, and I noticed something that I don't think anybody else even realized, not even the creators themselves. If you guide your attention towards the screen on my YouTube video, you will have seen it. Um, I, I probably don't even have to elaborate, but for those of you that might have some ink in your eyes, um... <sighs> That's a Squid Game tracksuit. Now, truthfully speaking, I didn't think much of this at first, but for some reason, I couldn't get these thoughts out of my head. Like, what did this mean? Why, why, why was this here? I mean, this tracksuit isn't even in the actual show. Like, why is the scene strictly in the opening? I admittedly, I might have just been too scared to come to terms with it, but after a lot of contemplating, as you probably expected, this was the point that the tentacle broke the squiz back for me. Kanagi Crazy Shrine Maidens from the Fall 2008 anime season predicted Squid Game. O. M. S. Now, unlike Squid Game, Kanagi has basically nothing to do with that games, but I don't think that's what the anime was trying to achieve, and that's also my main gripe with these the videos on similar anime to Squid Game, because they only scratch the surface, like, I think- I think they're too afraid to really dig deep and find the true Squid Game within us all. Which brings us back... to Buddhism. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Buddhism is one of the main religions celebrated in Japan, and Kanagi is no different. I mean, the name of the show, along with Nagi herself, is based on the Buddhist deity under the same name. So yeah, there's definitely some overlap to be had there. And for those of you who haven't watched these crazy shrine maidens yet, um... Basically, this guy has this old wooden statue made from this ancient sacred tree, and he walks outside to go to school, but then he watches a cute girl burst out of the statue, and he's like, damn, that was, that was kind of fucking hot. And now they live together, right? And they pretend to do brother-sister roleplay, and no, I, I wasn't joking about that. So yeah, this girl is basically a goddess, but she can't really do anything, so just think of her like Aqua from Konosuba with some slight downgrades, and you know... You basically have the same character. Now, the thing with Nagi is, um, she actually gains more power the more people that worship her, and of course, the only way to do that is to fulfill her dream of becoming an idol, so thanks for spoiling that shit in the opening, I guess, uh... But this is where it gets... dark. You see, what I, I don't think the directors realized is that by putting this Squid Game tracksuit in the opening, it basically confirmed the theory that I have been crafting for as long as Squid Game decided to show us its true colors. Just to keep everyone on the same page here, Squid Game is a South Korean show, and of course, these fuckers also support Buddhism. Like, that's... that's fucked up. In other words, South Korea is basically Japan, okay? And look, right now, I get it, you might be a little confused, but trust me, when I say this, it will make a lot more sense later down the line. So, with that being said, I think it's time to play a game. In Squid Game, we of course know about the bridge, one of the most deadly and grueling challenges in the entire show. Basically, you fall, you fucking die. And if we actually go back into the opening, 
guess, just just take a wild guess what's behind Nagi as she sings these Alvin and the Chipmunk sounding fucking anime tunes as if everything is just sunshine and rainbows, dude. Like, I can't, I can't do this shit. Maybe I need to slow down the footage. Do you see it yet? Maybe, maybe if I overlay this image on top, the puzzle pieces, or rather, the glass tiles will begin falling into place. Yes, directly behind Nagi in plain sight is the one and only Squid Game itself. The glass bridge. I don't even know what to say here, honestly. Like, I think this speaks for itself, but yes, this opening from Kanagi is a direct call out to the Netflix Squid Game that aired 13 years in the future. And you know, to be completely transparent, the title of this video, it basically I lied. All right, sorry, I don't care. I know that I called this a prediction, but no. Kanagi isn't actually a Squid Game prediction. From the evidence I have gathered here today, I, I have come I have come. I have come. I have come here to say that Kanagi Crazy Shrine Maidens is a prequel. Holy squid. Now, as we know, Nagi's main goal in this anime is to become an idol, right? And from this opening, we would assume that she achieved her dreams. But the thing is, did she? I don't know. I mean, in the show itself, so sort of spoilers, she doesn't become a fucking idol, dude. But maybe she did. I, I don't know. But I think that there's more going on here than we actually think. This this might be a little scary, but from what I gathered, I think Nagi was an aspiring idol doing everything she possibly could, but just like me, she went broke, okay? I mean, if, if we recall from earlier, she literally has to live in this guy's house because she was teleported into the world with nothing more than the clothes on her back. And I'm thinking, uh, somewhere down the line, as she strived to become the true idol master, she... Uh, she went fucking bankrupt, dude. Like, she went millions in debt. I mean, if I learned anything from Love Live, it's that being an idol is very expensive and time-consuming, okay? And at this point, Nagi's- she's lost all hope, right? She has nowhere to turn, she's literally homeless, and while contemplating on the brink of suicide, someone taps her shoulder. Yep, it's fucking him. This bitch. Yeah, they play their little fucking paper games, dude, and as you'd probably guess, Nagi shamelessly falls into his trap because she's a fucking retard and calls up Squid Game headquarters to play Squid Game for herself, not realizing what she's actually getting herself into. However, in an act that defies all odds, may maybe it's because she's goddess or something, I don't know, I don't even know if goddesses can die, right? But <laughs> she wins. She wins the squidding Squid Game, man, and all of a sudden, she's bloated. No, not like that. She's rich. She can do anything she wants. And who would have guessed? It's time to become the fucking idol master. You may have thought this though. Why why in the opening is Nagi in front of the bridge? Well, let me ask you this. Do you remember why these guys were in front of the bridge? Not only did Nagi become the idol master, but she also became the mastermind of Squid Game itself. She won the 2008 Squid Game Olympics and took over the throne as the corrupt mastermind to oversee the tragedy of the subsequent Squid Games. That's not very Buddhist if you ask me. The fact that she not only won Squid Game but even went to the lengths of shamelessly flaunting her victory is something that I don't think I will ever be able to recover from. <sighs> Thanks for watching guys. Sweet dreams. Um if you actually watch to the end of the video, here's a little kiss. <laughs>back to another Satok reaction video. Today, Satok is reacting to Umineko chapter 7, um, real, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, um, you know, it, we have, a uh, we have the video, like, um, you know, I always wonder, right, like, why, um, we always ask when they cry, we never ask why they cry, why is she crying, she's not crying here, but uh, she does have a variant. Please be patient with me, I'm a little slow. Look at that. See? Right there, she's crying. I can do that to her too, but I'm not a fucking, um, 
racist, so like, I'm not gonna do that shit. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next Sotok reaction video. Goodbye.